French actor Talma is Nero in Britannicus, the last emperor of the Caesar dynasty. Greetings. It's fallen to me. Cut that... the crap! Get to the point. We both know why you're here. And have you got anything to tell me? What does it matter? It's too late anyway. Do what you have to do and get out. It's never too late, sir. If you have something to say, now is the time. You don't understand. Everything's already written. It's over. Why is he behaving like the perfect culprit? What is it that's already written? I'm not sure I follow you. No, you don't. The Massacre of the Innocents, but by Van Harlem, I think that Mortimer likes to play mind games with his guests. Dear friend, Amber Crystals.
Sorrows of Young Werther. There's a handwritten text signed by Von Werner on this first page. Dear Elizabeth, I know that this book is but a small token compared to the delightful moments you gave me, but I hope that this will nonetheless keep the memory alive. Your ever obedient servant. So, Volner had a relationship with Elizabeth, but that's hardly surprising given his fondness for the occult. Has Sam uh, finished with this room? Do you know who could have made such a mess of this room? Miss Adams, sir. We were given orders to leave the room as it was, so as not to rush her. Did she have a fight with someone to get the room into this state? Not that I know of, sir. Miss Adams would sometimes throw a tantrum, during which she would destroy anything that came to hand. Lord Mortimer, Tell us not to enter the room. Thanks for that information. You are welcome, sir. Has Sam uh, finished with this room? I know enough now. Thank you. Very well, sir. Sir may return whenever need be. I shall guard the door. Mr. President, you can guess why I'm here. Of course. Lord Mortimer has sent me to ask you a few questions about last night. It's... How am I going to tell Elizabeth's father that she's dead? I know, Mr. President. I shall endeavor to find out the truth about this tragedy. I must ask you to help me, though. Please. Find the degenerate pig who did this, Louis. Elizabeth took laudanum? Yes. She came to ask me for some. She had finished her reserve, I believe. Did she tell you why she was so desperate to get some, Mr. President? She said she had terrible migraines that wouldn't go away. More likely for the voices she heard, not the migraines. Tell me, Mr. President, had you spoken to Elizabeth since your arrival? You know her father. You thought she was dead. No, I didn't. And I believe I'll be taking my remorse with me to my grave. I wanted to, but I didn't know where to begin. You can't blame yourself. You, well, you couldn't have known that her days were numbered. Do you know if she had any enemies, Mr. President? Not that I know of. I heard about her altercation with Mr. Perry, but that case was closed, if I'm not mistaken. 
But if in doubt, I wouldn't leave any door unopened. And I'd go and question your fellow countrymen. Don't worry. Countrymen or not, I'm not letting anybody slip through the cracks. Mr. President, we found a footprint at the scene of the crime. Not a dress shoe, I hope. That's all I wear. No, rest assured, it looks like the print of a big ankle boot. A large size, I'd say. Perfect. That should help you, Louis. It's a clue. What can I do for you, Louis? I won't keep you annoyed. Thank you for answering my questions. See you, Louis. Monsieur de Richer, please be quick. We are both very busy. As any good soldier would, I imagine you own a firearm. May I see it? Oh, well, if you really want to, here is my pistol. Don't worry, it is not loaded. Do you have several of these? In Corsica, oui, but not on me when I am traveling. Only a bandit would carry such an arsenal. Thank you. Did you hear about young Elizabeth? Indeed. It is deeply regrettable. Lord Mortimer asked me to... I know. You no doubt want to know my alibi. I spent the night downstairs playing cards. Did you notice anything unusual during the evening? Nothing at all. Except the luck of the devil of Lord Mortimer and Sir Gregory at cards. Did they win much? Oh la la, monsieur, they cleaned us out more like. But I plan on getting it all back before we leave. Someone saw you not far from the victim's room. Can you tell me what you were doing exactly, please? I can tell you that someone is an idiot. I wanted to warn her to be careful. You see, on the night of my arrival, I saw someone leaving her room in haste, and I wanted to speak to her, to warn her. Unfortunately, the young lady slipped through my fingers each time. Now I know why. She had every reason to be worried. What an idiot I was not to insist. I could have helped her. Were you able to recognize the Prowler? 
Unfortunately not, no. It was dark, and Lord Mortimer was waiting for me. I was not really paying attention anyway. Excuse me for insisting, but if you saw him or her, I'm sure you would have more information than that. It's just that you don't think it can be of help to me. What do you mean? I don't know. Was it a woman, for instance? Bearing in mind that all the women here wear whalebone dresses, which is rather noticeable. Uh, a man, I should say. I don't recall seeing the silhouette of a dress. You see, you saw many things, in fact. Hang on. Laissez-moi réfléchir. Let me think a minute. A wig? His height? The sound of his footsteps, maybe. Ah, his height. Oui, somewhat imposing. A tall man, and straight. As for the rest, um, I don't know, Monsieur de Richer. Not to worry. That's already quite a lot. Thank you for everything. I've been studying him for a while now, and I don't think he was lying. Yet, I'm surprised how easy it was for me to read him. It must surely be his military side. I wish they all could be like that. My investigation would be finished already. Well, have we finished, monsieur? Exactly. Thanks again for all your answers. Good day. A bicorn decorated with a cockade. It must belong to a French soldier. Finished. Not quite. I'd like you to answer a few questions. You were armed the night of my arrival. Can I see your weapon? No. You do realize you're not helping, don't you? You're making it worse for yourself. I know you were at the scene. We will save a lot of time if you just tell me what happened. You know nothing at all! Enlighten me then. For now, I have your footprint in a pool of blood. That's right! The only thing you can prove is one of my boots was at the scene. Congratulations, you've wrapped up the investigation. All right, have you finished? Not quite. I'd like you to answer a few questions. Two days ago, I surprised you having a go at Miss Adams. What happened? Did you want to give her another beating? She wouldn't let you push her around again, huh? Shut up, you little shit! You have no idea what happened, and here you are, carping away! You think you're investigator of the year! Have you taken a look at yourself, Dorisha? Didn't you get enough beating her black and blue the last time? I did not! Go on. Keep going. Finish what you came to do, then get out of my room. Let's get right to it. Are you Elizabeth Adams' murderer? That is for you to prove, if I'm not mistaken, boy. You weren't expecting me to do all the legwork for you, were you? Lazy man. Goodbye, sir. We shall meet again. Probably. Thank you. 
Lord Johann von Wohlner. fewer than nine wounds on the thorax with a lot of blood. At first sight, I'd say that's what caused her death. The wounds are clean and look like they've been inflicted by a sharp object. Some of the lacerations of damaged vital organs, the heart, the right lung, which is perforated. Most of them weren't given with much force. She might even have survived. But the stab in the heart, though not all that deep, sealed her fate. except that tattooed symbol. Has Sir finished with this room? I know enough now. Thank you. Very well, Sir. Sir may return whenever need be. I shall guard the door. What a tragedy, my son. How could uh, such a thing have happened? That's exactly what I'm trying to find out. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary last night? Mm. I saw the young French soldier, Bonaparte, I believe, hanging around near Miss Adams' room. But I would not want to get an innocent man into trouble. It's uh, probably nothing. Not to worry, Your Eminence. If he is innocent, then he has nothing to fear. Do you know why Monsieur Bonaparte was hanging around her room like that? Well, I wouldn't be surprised to learn that the dashing young soldier had become infatuated with a fragile young woman who looked a bit lost. But I don't think he got a very warm welcome. Bonaparte and Adams? <laughs> but they didn't even know each other, did they? I couldn't say that. One last thing. You must know that Peru hit young Adams on the evening of our arrival. He apparently violently attacked her in the small salon. Do you know anything else about the attack? Oh, unfortunately not. I arrived too late to intervene. Young Miss Adams had already been submitted to the foul louts right. Otherwise, you can believe it would not have happened.
I've come to speak about the findings of the investigation, my lord. I'm listening, Louis. I'm sorry, my lord, but I don't have any evidence conclusive enough to allow me to name the culprit with certitude. Really? I see. Well, that's your decision, Louis, and I accept it. Given the distinguished guests and the sensitive political issues involved at the conference, I trust you'll leave me to conclude the case in my own way. Right. It's time we spoke about your mother, Louis. She seems to be making every effort to steer clear of your guests. What, what do you mean? For the past few weeks, my mother's been playing cat and mouse, if you will. I don't know why, but it wouldn't surprise me to learn that she's trying to avoid someone. The question is, who? And in your opinion, would she be the cat or the mouse? Knowing my mother, she would be the cat. That doesn't make me feel any better, Louis. What was the official reason why my mother came to your island? I knew about your mother's activities and yours in the Golden Order. I thought we had everything to gain by working together. You mean the cannon deal with Monsieur Bonaparte? Among others, yes. How did you hear about that? Monsieur Bonaparte came to speak to me about it yesterday, during lunch. I see. So impetuous. He was supposed to let me speak to you about it first. Our friend Napoleon desperately needed financial backing to properly equip his army. I took it upon myself to back him, because I have a firm conviction that he can go far. We shall see. However, there's one thing that surprises me. Isn't Bonaparte a bit young to deserve so much attention? Well, you come straight to the point. I like that. Indeed, if you knew just how much you remind me of him. Trust me, I'll wager that Monsieur Napoleon will soon prove himself. I'm working on it, at least. Once this deal was closed, I had big plans for Sarah. Such as what? You see, I've invited several influential figures on my island to present them with a project at the conference. It will be presented later today. I thought that the Golden Order had a role to play. And I still think so. I was hoping Sarah would be able to join us. Hmm. I see. Indeed, if by chance your mother decided not to return to us before the conference, would you do me the great honor of attending? If only to follow the deliberations while waiting for her to duly take her seat. Why not? We shall see. Ah, thank you so much. In this way, you'll be able to keep your mother informed of what is said. Um, there's something else I'd like to briefly go over. Earlier, you asked me the official reason for your mother's presence here. Is there an off-the-record reason why your mother came here? She... she was looking for someone. What, what do you mean? In Paris. We were working on a smuggling case to do with occult objects. We had just arrested a dealer who intended to go to you to meet a buyer. My mother was here to find out to whom he intended to sell his stolen treasure. Oh. 
Uh, what was the name of your dealer? The dealer was called Von Burchard. As for the buyer, he was unknown to us. Hmm. No, I don't know anything about that. There's something I still don't get. In your opinion, why would your mother remain in hiding over several weeks? Her not coming back to the manor after so long makes me wonder if she is wary of someone. Well, certainly. But whom? The only ones who were present during her stay were Sir Gregory, Duchess Hillsborough, Mr. Von Warner, and myself. Seems you're close friends. What, what can you tell me about Sir Gregory? Gregory? Oh, he's one of those cantankerous old men who hates losing at chess. He's a little eccentric and rather conservative. I'm sure you've met the type. Well, actually, I don't judge people on how they look. And you do well not to. What with his manner of continuing to wear makeup as he does, Gregory often gives off an unhealthy image. The only thing I can tell you is that Sarah had indeed changed. At the beginning of her stay here, we enjoyed spending time together, solving the world's problems. Tell me. Tell me about her disappearance. Since she disappeared, your mother has been seen once. Her behavior on the evening of your arrival greatly surprised Gregory and myself. She resurfaced to attack Emma, Emily Hillsborough's twin sister. And she shot her with a pistol. Then, before Gregory could intervene, she ran off and disappeared again. I beg your pardon? Hang on. That means my vision on the wharf, it was actually happening inside the manor. Mother shot Emily's sister? The very person she came looking for? Why would she do that? Excuse me, but between that and the childhood of Lady Adams, it's, it's all a bit much for me to cope with. I need to piece it all together again to see things more clearly. You said that you spent a lot of time talking together at the beginning. What happened for that to change? I'm afraid I, I haven't much to tell you. The more the days went by, the more she withdrew into herself. She never gave me an explanation. Until the day came when she purely and simply disappeared. Where, where did she go when she wanted to be alone? She would shut herself away in a room we use as a box room upstairs. W would you allow me to go there? Naturally, Louis, of course. I'll send you a servant to open it. Thank you. That's all I can tell you about the disappearance of your mother, Louis. I would like to have been more helpful. I shall stay on her trail and follow up any leads. Thank you. Uh, we will meet later on to welcome our last guest. In the meantime, I shall get someone to open the box room upstairs for you. Thank you. Hmm. The room is just opposite Mortimer's study. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost. St. Paul on the road to Damascus by Caravaggio.
Caravaggio attained a magnificent command of black and the play of colors too. Paul facing an ordeal, the curtains of his illusions being raised and receives the light from his savior. What is this disc? Dante's Paradise. Raise your head and be reassured. For what comes up here from the mortal world must ripen in our rays. Honey, the remedy of the gods. There are burnt papers in the chimney. There's a legible fragment left. Hey, I recognize my mother's handwriting. She says... We must find a safer way to communicate. Someone is on to us. Trust in my faith in the man with the sword. So mother had an accomplice here. Who could it be? Who could she be suspicious of? We must find the next part. Faith, sword. <laughs> I recognize her love of riddles there. papers in the chimney. There's a legible fragment left. Hey, I recognize my mother's handwriting. She says, we must find a safer way to communicate. Someone is on to us. Trust in my faith in the man with the sword. So mother had an accomplice here. Who could it be? Who could she be suspicious of? I must find the next part. Faith, sword. <laughs> I recognize her love of riddles there. The door appears to be locked on the other side. something fall to the ground a metallic sound like like a key falling to the floor we'll see if it works it's open Honey, I couldn't have hoped for better. St. Paul painted by Guido Rini. St. Paul is shown holding a sword. Strange, there's hardly any dust, as if the painting's been cleaned recently. There's a small inscription engraved on the frame. Let's take a closer look. This is how Paul spoke to his pilgrims from Rome. Just above that, someone's written down the figure 11 on the painting and underlined it twice. I don't know, what does that mean? So we have the figure 11 twice underlined and a story of a group of pilgrims who it looks like Paul is speaking to.
Maybe it's a code. There, there must be a connection. A text on Paul must be somewhere, and it must be associated with the figure 11. But what's the story with these pilgrims? I mean, a connection with a figure, maybe? Amber crystals. Painting of St. Mark from the collection of the apostles by Guido Rini. Several portraits of apostles, all signed by Guido Reni. Looks like someone touched this commode recently. Their fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. St. John is known as the youngest of Christ's apostles. Well, we often give credit to St. John for having written about the apocalypse in the last book of the Bible. The New Testament. first edition by Glutenberg. It's the first book that was ever printed. The pages are covered in annotations in Latin, French, and Hebrew. Someone spent years studying this Bible. This book is incredibly precious. I believe this is the book my mother referred to when calling upon the Lord. A volume of the Glutenberg Bible. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Wait, a note from Mother is carefully folded between the pages here. What does it say? Dear E, I'm glad you found this note. I was afraid the code of the two groups of pilgrims would mislead you. Pick up the package. You know where, and hide it where no one will find it. It's imperative. Awaiting your reply, 
hidden behind the youngest apostle. What? The youngest apostle? What does mother mean by that? this painting. It says half of each group will join the first city of Corinth. What the hell does that mean? A drawing of the Apostle Matthew, painted by Guido Rini. He's represented as writing the word of the Lord, transmitted by the Holy Spirit, who appears here in the guise of an angel. It must be the group of pilgrims mentioned from before. I guess maybe the city of Corinth is a reference to the epistle from Corinthians in the Bible. A chest with the occult symbol representing air. Several portraits of apostles, all signed by Guido Reni. Looks like someone touched this commode recently. There are fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. The painting looks like it's been taken down recently. But wasn't my mother said that she would wait for an answer hidden behind the apostle? Ah, of course. There's something written behind the painting. On the second day, the pilgrims will listen to the prophecy of the young apostle. They shall add one companion to their left and three to their right to complete their rank. What does it mean? On the second day, the pilgrims listened to the prophecy of the young apostle. The prophecy of the young apostle, that was John. And the prophecy mentioned is most likely the book of Revelations according to St. John. St. John is the only apostle painted in this gallery who hasn't got a beard. Hey, wait, that means it's him. He's the youngest apostle, right? This painting is therefore associated with the answer which E had to give to my mother. Now, I just need to know how to recover the answer. It's St. John, painted by Guido Rini. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin.
hereby know that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times, and a half a time, from the face of the serpent. Hey, a new note. It's been folded carefully in the corner of this page. The writing, it, it, it's not my mother's. S. I found the book in your effects. I've concealed it where no one can get their hands on it. I can assure you, awaiting your instructions, I will hear your reply like he who hears the angel. Hears the angel? What does that mean? Oh, it's probably the place where she was expecting to get the location of the next note. drawing of the Apostle Matthew, painted by Guido Rini. He's represented as writing the word of the Lord, transmitted by the Holy Spirit, who appears here in the guise of an angel. There's something else behind this painting. It says, half of each group will join the first city of Corinth. What the hell does that mean? chest with the occult symbol representing air. St. Paul on the road to Damascus by Caravaggio. St. Paul is the only saint to be presented twice in these paintings, contrary to the other apostles. How come? This painting has been hanging here for a long time. A lot of dust is built up on it. Well, a finger has drawn a number in the thin layer of dust. I can read the number four. Dante's Paradise. Raise your head and be reassured, for what comes up here from the mortal world must ripen in our rays. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing.
and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatea, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Or what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and neither tempteth he any man. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatea, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. What doth it profit, my brethren, Though a man say he hath faith, and have not works, can faith save him? Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unsoiled by the world. Hereby know that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his Spirit. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. This only would I learn of you, receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. But though we, or an angel from heaven, 
preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, Now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law with one another. Why do ye not rather suffer injustice? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Ah, oh, look, here's a message. It is of paramount importance that no one finds it. Watch out for the Prussian, he's on the trail. Let's meet up. I'll leave it to you to organize the rendezvous. Not today, I'm unable to do it. In the meantime, I'll follow the first group to Mark will reveal the answer to them. Prussian? Volner? I must have a word with him. And that first group of pilgrims, how many are there now? If I refer to the chapter I'm reading at the moment, six. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. For you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. If we have hope in Christ in this life only, we are, of all men, most miserable. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Dear E, I'm glad you found this note. I was afraid the code of the two groups of pilgrims would mislead you. Pick up the package. You know where and hide it where no one will find it. It's imperative, awaiting your reply, hidden behind the youngest apostle. What? The youngest apostle? What does mother mean by that? For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ, in them that are saved, and in them that perish. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, for we are as reprobates. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit not be more glorious? Because we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort, thy faith hath made thee whole, and the woman was made whole from that hour. Take heed that ye practice your justice before men, to be seen differently by them. Otherwise, ye shall have no reward of your Father, which is in heaven. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore.
Now, there is a Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. I and my Father are one. Then came together unto him the Pharisees, and certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread, and blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and was baptized by John and Jordan. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jerus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And so many came and couldn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. Then they suborned men, which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew and chief of the priests which did so. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And he became very hungry, and would have eaten, but while they were made ready, he fell into a trance. Hey, there's a note here, a message from Mother. And Apply to E. We must leave urgently, but first I absolutely must go beyond the nightmare. Watch out for Volner. He figured out I was avoiding him. A lay suspicion. See you tomorrow evening. Stand ready. For now, let's cease all communication until we meet. Take care of yourself. I suppose this must be the last message. What happened afterward? If it's what I suspect, I, I fear the worst. What did Mother mean by, I absolutely must go beyond the nightmare? I must go beyond the nightmare. What does she mean by that? guessing it's a metaphor. I need to figure out what this means. Mortimer's getting his guests together. I ought to join them so I don't look suspicious.
it's time I went back and joined everyone in the small salon. President George Washington. Monsignor, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Emily, I must speak to you. What's the matter, Louis? About last night, I'm guessing. I... sadly, no. Even if I'd like to have, I... Alas, there are more pressing matters. I have news about your sister. What have you found out? Look, I've started piecing together the events leading up to my mother's disappearance and your sister's. D did my mother know about your secret? Yes, even though I belong to the English chapter, her rank in the Order gives her access to a good deal of personal information. It must have been Emma I saw in my vision. I was given to understand that my mother and your sister bonded during their stay. I've got a question that might seem a little bit strange. I'm listening. If I said, go beyond the nightmare, would that ring any bells? Hmm. No, means nothing to me. Do you mean literally or figuratively speaking? It might be a place, I, I don't know where, but it's a lead. You ought to ask his eminence. He knows the house and its estate very well, being a frequent visitor here. Thanks for the advice. Should I speak to her about my vision? If what I saw is true, she might want to take revenge. Emily, there's something else. Go on then. It's... it's about your sister. I don't know what happened exactly, but it's possible that my mother had a go at her. I know, Louis. I found out that same evening. Well, thanks for not trying to hide it. What? Why didn't you tell me? I didn't know if I could trust you. Now I know I can. It seems that your mother tricked Emma. She apparently asked her to hide an important book, so that even she wouldn't know where it was. And then she shot her like a dog to make sure no one would ever find it again. How did you find out? Sir Gregory told me on my arrival. I'm sincerely sorry, Emily. Thank you, Louis. 
You're very kind. It means a lot to me. But you do realize your mother will have to accept the consequences of her acts. Th there must be an explanation, Emily. That's what we shall see. We'll speak about it later, somewhere safe. Come, Louis. They're waiting for us. You will pay dearly, Peru. I'm sure you were involved somewhere along the line. That's right. Pretend you don't know. One piece of advice. Don't travel through France on your way back, or it'll cost you dearly. Calm now, my friends. Let's calm down. Everyone seems to be a little unnecessarily heated. Don't forget where you are, please. What's going on here exactly? Sir Gregory called us together to introduce the last guest. But hardly had we arrived when he set upon Monsieur Peru. And who is this charming character? Manuel Godoy, the Duke of La Alcudia. He's the head of the Spanish government, Monsieur de Richer. He's the one who, in practice, controls Spain. How could you dare do such a thing? Dios mio, you are all out of your minds! Really, Duke Manuel? What made you kick up such a fuss? What? Have you not heard? Well, let me inform you that yesterday morning at 10.22 a.m. precisely, in the middle of the Place de la Révolution in Paris, by decree of the National Convention which Monsieur Peru works for, King Louis was guillotined. What? Oh, no. The King of France is dead, gentlemen. Our monarchies are in danger. I have said it before. How dare they? Oh dear. Oh, as if gracious. He's not the oh, it. Hmm. Friends, friends, let us calm down. Don't pretend to be surprised. He got a fair trial. Ridiculous, bastard. He was sentenced to death by 361 votes to 360. You beheaded a king for one vote. Is that your democracy? What an obnoxious act. Until this, anything was possible. This political coup will have grave consequences. France is lost. Gentlemen, please, let us take a step back a moment. In the name of holiness, he was the highest representative of God in France, Emily. Gentlemen, Duchess, we're all among people of reputable company here. We should be able to manage the conflicts of our nations in a respectful and orderly manner. I fully agree with you, sir. But that's enough, sir. With whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? Louis Maurras de Richer. Are you related to Sarah de Richer? Sarah is his mother, Duke. Gentlemen, this news affects us all, but I must ask you to remain calm. It's not the first time history has taken us by surprise. Let's ensure that our respective countries are allowed to respond appropriately to this news. Oh, rest assured. The response will not fall short, my friend. Good for you. Well, Your Grace, here I was preparing to introduce you as is proper, and you've beaten me to it. I'm delighted that we are all together at last. Our meeting will therefore be able to kick off shortly. I have just a few more little preparations to take care of before you all find out the reason for your presence here. In the meantime, I shall leave you to get to know one another. When you hear the bell, please proceed to the conclave room on my left, behind that door. I'll see you later. Uh, could you spare a moment, please, sir? I'm glad you ask. I want to talk to you, too. Of course. I heard about your mother's disappearance. He looks concerned. I don't know why, but I doubt it's from sympathy alone. Well, let's see what he wants from me. Any news of her? Have you found her, maybe? Here you speak, it sounds like you and my mother were close. 
Let's say I hold your mother in high esteem, yes. We were even planning to work together. That's what he was getting at. Uh, did she tell you about our arrangement? The cat's out of the bag now. More or less, but please do, do refresh my memory. Yes, of course. Uh, nothing of great importance in itself. During one of our discussions, she spoke of an old book which might have been of interest to me, and she had agreed to let me have it. A book about what? Ancient occultism. As you are aware, I am a doctor of theology. You might have come across some old books in her belongings, perhaps? The least one can say is that he doesn't beat around the bush. Sarah never travels without a few books. What does the one you're looking for look like exactly? It resembles a grimoire. It's divided into seven parts, each one individually locked. It was made in such a way that if someone tried to tamper with it, the sheets would be permanently tarnished. It's a unique copy. There's only one. The mere mention of it makes his face light up. Well, I'll take a closer look, but I can't promise you anything. You seem very upset. Is it so important to you, this book? Well, it's, uh, it's the search of a lifetime. What can I say? Every time I move closer to it, it seems to slip away at the last minute. I was very surprised to learn that your mother had it in her possession. I thought it was with a certain von Borchert in Paris. Do you know him? Indeed. One of your close friends? Uh, no, not really, but we were close once. Precisely over the case that concerns us now, because he claimed to have the book I'm looking for. Another dishonest person. What can you say? Can't trust anyone these days, huh? No. No. You can't. I hope I've been able to satisfy your curiosity, Mr. Von Volner, and that you succeed in finding what you're looking for. Oh. And so do I. And now, what if you told me who you really are working for, instead of keeping up this pretense? I beg your pardon? We both know what you're looking for, Von Volner. You're the one who Von Burchard was planning to sell it to. For centuries, all those who have come into contact with the Al-Azif have bitterly regretted it, Monsieur de Richet. You are playing a dangerous game. Please know that I am working for someone who does not appreciate anyone poking around in his business. Let me guess. You're dear king, I should think. What? You mean Frederick William? Oh, my poor fellow. You are miles away. That stupid, pretentious puppet wields no real power. But... Seeing as you do not wish to be serious, so be it. Good luck to you. 